I want to start out by telling you a little bit about myself that I think is important because it's what leads me to drive toward this congressional race. Now, I'm the son of a California state employee, a, a civil engineer, and I'm the grandson of a coal miner in Pennsylvania who quit his job in the middle of the Depression with no job in sight and only $200 to his name. And he took his wife and three small children clear across the country so that the future generations of his family would have a better opportunity. Now, I grew up in a small town up in Northern California, up on Mount Lassen. The name of the town was Paradise. And that's where I got my start. Good name for it, right? Paradise. But, and uh, in the middle of my high school years, my family moved down to Southern California. My father was an engineer for the state, and he got transferred. I earned my way through college with a football scholarship, where I got my degree in political science and economics, and then I went on to USC to graduate school. Then I served my country as a combat pilot in the Marine Corps during the Vietnam War. And after coming back, I entered the corporate field and, raised, and, and climbed the corporate ladder, and I saw what it was like to be in the boardroom and work with labor and all of these things, I, I became chief operating officer for a major subsidiary of the fifth largest bank in the country. After that, as an entrepreneur, I was founder and CEO of Pyramid Software, a software development and publishing company that distributed software worldwide. But probably the achievement that I'm most proud of is as a single parent, all three of my children graduated from California State University campuses and all three of them are off on their own successful careers. And that's what's made it possible for me to run for Congress. I wanted to run my whole life, and as you know, uh, that kind of independence can really be supportive. Now, I've been blessed with these super experiences, but let me tell you that I have an awful lot in common with all working people, just like all of you. I've raised children, I've had to make ends meet, I've gone to PTA meetings. I serve my country in uniform. But I also share the concerns that you have. Gas is threatening to be $3 a gallon before the end of the year. An ill-planned war is killing off our Americans for no apparent reason. Most of us, or many of us, are one major accident or one serious illness away from financial disaster. Our jobs are being outsourced. And we're faced with the prospect of having to defend our families and our homes against future terrorist attacks. So with all that, the picture looks pretty grim. But my experience as a businessman, as a Marine, and as a father, I can tell you that there are no problems that we cannot overcome, no challenges that we can't face. But these are not Democratic Party problems. And they're not Republican Party problems, and they're not union problems. These are American problems. And as Americans, we have got to come together and solve these things and get the job done. Because I'm going to tell you, the problems are not going to go away. They haven't, and they're not going to. But the solution is within reach. Now, my experience has taught me that to solve these difficulties, you have to begin with respecting the right of personal independence and freedom, of compassion and willingness to serve the community, and most of all, the determination to go the distance, especially in the face of those that tell you that it can't be done, or to say that the job is too big. Now, I'm here to tell you that my parents worked their entire life worked very hard to live life in their terms, securely, and they didn't owe anything to anybody. Now, they etched on me the importance of hard work, of personal independence and freedom. But things are different now, aren't they? You know, we work harder and harder, harder and harder, and seem to get further and further behind. And we find ourselves indentured to special interest groups like the oil companies, HMOs, multinational corporations. 
There are entire industries that are polluting our air and our water. And we have a federal government and a state government that is either unwilling or incapable to do anything about it. Now, I believe that it's time for somebody to stand up for American independence. And until we have a government that will work as hard to protect our freedom and our opportunities as we work to put a roof over our head and food on our table, then that government isn't doing its job. And it's our responsibility to do something about it. It's our responsibility to take control of, of our government. Now, one of the first things you learn in the Marine Corps is nobody is stronger than their team, okay? And the team is not stronger than the weakest person. We were always taught that. And it's the responsibility of you and all your teammates that when somebody falls behind, you help them catch up. That's part of the tradition of the Marine Corps, and that's part of the tradition of the United States and our society. And that's what we stand for in service and so forth. I believe strongly in the words that John Kennedy used when he said that the rising tide will float all boats. But our Congress has adopted a cut and run approach to these American principles. We need representatives who will embrace these ideas. We need a representative in the 46th district that will act as a vehicle to help the community, help the helpless, thereby making it easier for all of us to be successful and for us to get ahead. And I think that's, that's critical too. Now there is nothing more important than being able to persevere when you're facing daunting odds. That's the kind of person you want in office. Uh, several months ago, when I told a lot of people that I was going to run in the Marine Corps Marathon in Washington, D.C. on October 30th, I was told all kinds of things, like you might imagine. First of all, I was told I was crazy, right? And then, and I could understand that a little bit. Then I was told I was too old. Then I was told the race is too far. I need to find a shorter one, you know, 26 miles, you know? But that didn't stop me from training, and I will successfully complete that marathon. Now, one of the great things about America is the generosity of Americans. We are a country of givers. And if you don't believe me, ask anyone that's been involved in a national disaster anywhere in the world in the last 50 years. Example, the South Asia tsunami. Or just talk to people from the Red Cross that were there after 9-11 when they turned back hundreds of people that wanted to give blood. When there's a disaster, we step up. That's who we are. You know, a major component is that we help the people that can't help themselves. You know, that's always been a tradition of this country. And that's what's important. It's important to me. And, then, you know, we want to have, we want to own our own homes. We want to get ahead financially. We want all those things just like they do. But the difference is we have compassion and we're willing to serve and we're interested in the community itself. You know, that's the difference. But I live life under the ideal that no dream is unreachable. No goal is too far. And just good enough is just not good enough. You know, I'm gonna go the distance. You know, and that's that's important to me. Now what we need is a is is a congressman in this district that will go the distance for you. We don't need a part-time congressman. We need someone that goes the distance for you, for your family, for your job, for clean air, for clean water, for your security, for the security of your community. Now, I see an America where everyone can get ahead if they want to, where they can feel safe, where they can be assured that their family is, has, is healthy and is safe and they can live with the security of knowing that their future is secure. That's why I'm running for Congress, and I'm gonna go the distance for you to make those things happen. Thank you very much.